Okay, so a couple of things that folks complained about when the Sony A7 and the A7R came out, and even when the NEX cameras came out, they complained about the size of the lenses. Lenses were too big, and especially full-frame lenses are usually pretty big and heavy. I'm going to show you a couple of lenses that are the opposite. They're small, they're solid, they're well-built, they're heavy for their size, but they're really compact, and they go on the camera, they look beautiful, and these are full-frame lenses. Now there's some controversy as to how well these work with an A7R. I'm not going to test them with the A7 because I don't have one, but I'm going to test them with the A7R. And I can tell you right now, my initial tests are favorable. Again, I'm not super picky about things like purple fringing, a little softness in the corner, and so on uh, in certain shots. As long as most of my shots look pretty damn good, I'm happy. So we're going to look at how I put these on the camera here. I'm going to show you a couple of adapters. These two lenses are Voigtlander. I think I'm pronouncing that correct. One is a 40 millimeter f1.4 Nocton Classic, N-O-K-T-O-N Classic. The other one is a Scope, Scoptar, S-K-O-P-A-R, 21 millimeter f4 pancake lens. And the one was $449, and the second was $419. And then I bought the two adapters you can see here. And I can tell you right now that I like the Photo Deox Pro adapter better of these two. And that's spelled F-O-T-O-D-I-O-X Pro. And I'll put the descriptions in the YouTube video. Of the two adapters, I like it better. They're both going to work, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the adapter on the lens at all times because I'm always going to use these lenses on E-mount cameras so there's no reason to take the adapter off. I'm just going to put the adapter on the camera and that's the trickier part is putting it on the camera. It's kind of tight going on so I don't want to be taking that adapter, I mean on the lens. I don't want to take that adapter on and off the lens any more than I have to so it'll stay on the lens all the time and then it's very easy to take it on and off of the camera just like any other E-mount lens. I did notice the Photo Deox Pro adapter has a much more visible white dot that you line up with the dot on the camera to put it on. So that's going to be nice. I, I do like that adapter of the two. Uh, if I had to do over again, I would have gotten two Photo Deox Pro adapters. But they both seem to be working. The second adapter is called a Pro Optic, P R O O P T I C, which I also got from Adorama together with the two lenses. It was cheaper. It was $39.95, and I think the Photo Deox uh, unit was around $65, something like that, on Amazon. So it's a little more expensive, but I think it's worth it. I did get these two filters. I'm going to put these two UV filters on and just leave them on, and then I'll almost never use lens caps on these. These will just be on the camera. I'll be ready to shoot. The lens caps will just go in a box somewhere and just never be used. That's what I do on my Zeiss lens, my 24 millimeters Zeiss, same thing. It's just ready to go, no lens cap ever on it. And I just find it's easier to, to wipe dust off or something like that if I have one of these lens filters on there. It's because it's flat right across, and it's just easy just to hit it with a handkerchief and knock any dust off of it. So that's the main reason why I have that. And I don't notice that it really uh, has any detrimental effect on the photos, to tell you the truth. So um, no real downside to having those on there. Now... Uh, I've, I've shot some test photos without any kind of a hood on these, and they seem to be doing fine. These are, I believe, both multi-coated. I know the 40 millimeter one is multi-coated. There's two versions of that. There's a single coat and multi-coat. I do recommend getting the multi-coated version, and um, that's the one I have. And initial tests, again, show that it works great. And look how great these things look on the camera. I think they look fantastic. And, again, they make it a nice compact rig just the way it should be and you have a decent sized jacket pocket or something it can go in that I think it makes it a nice uh, nice looking unit and focusing these is pretty daggone easy got like a little lever on the side that you push and the, the travel is not that far so you can focus it very quickly and with the focus peaking turned on on the camera very easy to tell what's in focus by either using the screen on the back of the camera or by using the uh, electronic viewfinder. Either way, quick and easy to focus. And if you're using the 21 millimeter at like f5.6 or something, just about everything's in focus anyway. So it almost makes it like a point and shoot. 
So these cameras are, are, are a lot of fun, and I think that you're going to find these lenses are a good mix. And what's neat about it is the 40 millimeter is an f1.4 lens. So you can shoot in the dark with this daggone thing. And the one thing I was disappointed about was the Zeiss lens that they came out with initially is a 35 millimeter f2.8. And it's $800. And I bought this 40 millimeter f1.4 for $449. And sure, I have to focus it manually, but that's no big deal. It's pretty easy to focus these manually. And so I think this is really a good option for people that are buying an A7R and, and want a lens to use on it that without, without spending a ton of money on like a Leica lens or something like that. These are extremely well made. A lot of people say that they're every bit as well made as the Leica lenses. Now, is the quality going to be as good as Leica? Maybe not, but it's daggone good in my opinion. And in my opinion, it's good enough. And I'm going to do a bunch of tests. I'm going to shoot some videos with these two lenses, and I'm going to be putting them up. So stay tuned uh, on my channel for a complete shakedown on these lenses. And, of course, my videos are real-world use. I, I don't sit there and shoot at charts and, and uh, you know, go into the excruciating detail of some reviewers. But um, I can tell you right now that my initial, the initial feel of them and operation of them and all that is all very positive. And I did take some quick still photos and low light. I took some video clips and so far it's, it's looking pretty daggone good for these units. So stay tuned for more details. Thanks for tuning in. And this is a test of the wide angle lens outdoors, a handheld. It's going to be a little jerky because I'm hand holding it, but I just want to see what it looks like outdoors. And again, f5.6 with the wide angle lens outdoors on a mixed uh, clouds and sun day here in Florida. And this is another clip, same lens, and this time at, uh, I'm at f8, f8. Stay tuned for more video clips and stills on the way. Stay tuned. Search my channel for A7R keyword and you'll find them.